Dark vs. Pet. To the top right of the map, we have our Star Tail player. This is Pet. It's his map choice since he's currently down one map in the series. One map win away from going to the Constellation match. 10 overward. Yep, both of them not starting with an early pool here. Dark spawns to the bottom left of the map. Yeah. And uh, looks like he's just pulling a life, his teammate, uh, going for the over drone there. And we'll see well, how he wants to transition it out. Both of these players, I feel, probably evenly matched in the matchup. It's just that Dark caught Pet off guard in the first game, finished him off. Basically, instead of, like, in, in that game, he could have transitioned into Lair. That would have been, like, reevaluating the situation, winning for sure. But he actually just, like, went for to swing the axe on uh, Pet's head and came out clean. So, there's the pool first, actually. I love it when you see, like, they always zoom in on the overlords and how they pass each other. That's, like, when you know that nothing's going on in the match. When the most exciting thing that happens is two overlords in the middle of the map just missing each other, like Romeo and Juliet. The love story, they will never be together. They will never be together. No. One overlord will be at the bottom left, the other one at the top right, and they will most likely die at some point a painful death. One of them's gonna, like, become a, the Taylor Swift overlord and sing about it. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> <laughs> How is that? That sounds... <laughs> Zerg's like that. You're man. so romantic. Zerg's Zer <laughs> like that kind of thing, I think. It's like... this. Is the the Zergs are just like the people on the internet. Like, wow, the Overlord's ugly, but it can sing really well. It's a beautiful story. You know, you can be a good singer and be ugly. It's okay. What is that vi YouTube video called where this uh, Korean guy makes those voices? He imitates the Zerg voices of the units. Oh, I know what you're talking about. There's huh? a YouTube video, guys. I can't if remember which player never, that was. If you have actually never like seen the video, then... Then look it up on YouTube. I don't know exactly what you have to look for. Maybe just voice and StarCraft and Korea. That is probably already enough, but it's pretty funny. Like, that guy knows exactly how to imitate an Overlord, a Hydra. Goliath, even. He, like, yeah, did yeah, some the, Terran voices. The Terran voices and even Protoss. Like, it was pretty, pretty cool. So check that out. Like, if you've never seen that, it's super old, several years old, but it is absolutely amazing. Yeah, you, you might, know, might have to Google for that, but still. Do you know the... The, the voices that come out when you click on the Terran uh, Academy in StarCraft 1, where there's this weird yell yeah, that yeah, comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I love the Carbot answer to that with the, the Halloween special. That was yeah, like. Yeah, that was pretty good. I was like, oh my god, that's so clever. <laughs> I like that in Warcraft 3 back then when you had those noise sounds when you click on a unit several times and just what they said in general, especially the ogres with the two hats, you know, and when they're having the discussion with each other, that was awesome. I really love that. That's one of the things why I'm really so excited for Heroes of the Storm because I feel Blizzard is going to bring all of that back and that you have these funny things again. Oh man, I'm, and I'm also in so terms of, ready. Of announcers, like think about it, Abitha announcer the entire time of the game when you do something and he comments on it, that's going to be or so Or even good. if you have like Dustin Browder, our, <laughs> our base is taking terrible, terrible damage. <laughs> we need more rocks. <laughs> I would that love would to have awesome. that. I would pay big money, man. <laughs> that would that would be absolutely great. I want to have the Dustin Brown announce. So that's a really good idea. <laughs> I think that would be just my favorite thing. <laughs> oh my god, that would be cool. Well, right now what we have in the game, now that things are starting to spike up a little bit, we have both of them going actually into a baneling nest. I think the one for Dark already finished, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there are the banelings morphing. So we will see aggression, and or potentially aggression. Pet yes, sees it. It's actually Dark, uh, Pet who moves out here. Dark, no. Dark moves out right. Pet Dark defense. Dark moves out Pet defense, yeah. Pet moves out to defend. Well, that the, was silly. The problem is that the banelings are actually green, even when they are for the red player, so... Uh, no color mod on this one. Yeah, not really. At least not that much. Fooled me for a second there. But yeah, so we have uh, this... This is a little bit old school. This is something that we've seen in a long time in Wings of Liberty, that it was only Banelings and Zerklings in the beginning yeah. of the game. I think it was like Fruit Dealer versus Chigua, like in that <laughs> first world tournament. You remember that? Yeah, in, yeah. In the beta? It was just like this is best of seven DVZ series where they only just did Ling Banelings. Chigua was awesome, and he's still around. He's still playing. That's yeah. pretty cool. But nobody yeah. knows where fruit dealer is. <laughs> he's selling fruit somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just nobody knows exactly where. Uh, he, he's hiding with Inca. <laughs> well, we have the, the Latex started for Dark a little bit faster, and he already shows us with that that he is not going to commit fully to this. But they're just drawing for the trades there. And here we go. Bailings detonating. Latex has been started for Dark, as I mentioned. Pet not going into there just yet. 
No, not yet. And... Does he have a Rotorn Dark, that is? I don't think he does. Oh! That was a bit of a mistake. Yep, 18 units killed against 7. No, he doesn't have a Rotorn just He's just going to go yet. Mutas, I guess. He's got 4 Gas and the Lair. Yeah, he definitely could. I think he's. I think that's the plan. He doesn't have Eagle Chambers either. So... We'll have to wait a few more moments for him to uh, finish up that Lair. But I think that the Mutalist prediction will be a correct one. I will, well. correct, I will correct myself if I'm wrong, but... Dark is going to the Spire now, so with the Mutalist he will chase down Overlords and potentially even go into his opponent's middle line, depending on how fast Pet realizes what's happening here. Because what he needs are, of course, a few Spore Crawlers. Creels are alone, they're not going to cut it here. With Spores, on the other hand, he can defend his bases quite easily. Yeah, I heard that a Spore Crawler one-shots two Mutalists. <laughs> We're not there yet, but yeah, we might at some point. Oh wow, five! Uh, he's spine crawling up like crazy now that he sees that the roaches are already moving towards his base. Five in total. Just getting his own defensive banelings as well. The two drones he made, he wishes he could make into uh, four zer more zerglings. Um, he can use those drones to make more spine crawlers, I suppose. I think he will actually be able to defend this. Oh yeah, he will. I mean, Pet this is, is getting a lot of links, but with five spine crawlers and banelings, actually six spine crawlers. I think he's actually going to defend this just fine. Yeah, he should be able to. Do so that many banelings here to defend. Yeah, well, the one first is gone. is gone. He needs to buy a little bit of time, and he does. Gets those Banelings in, but here come the spine crawlers, and that is a lot of them. Maybe sneaking by with the Zerglings into the main base? That's something he could do. The problem is he doesn't know if there's a Baneling on top of the run. Yeah, you know, you never want to make that choice. Spire's done, he can start seven Mutus. And... Uh, Okay, if you base. make the choice to just run up that ramp, you should actually also in Pro League, in any tournament, you should be allowed to type in chat YOLO. <laughs> because that's what you're saying. If you actually decide to run up a ramp with the, like 20, 30 Zerglings, you should be allowed to type YOLO. I'm not, I don't care if it's a televised match or not, that should be in the rules. Um, this base is going to have to be cancelled. Yeah, and I can't believe it. Like, he had so many links on the map, he just was not aware enough to Oh, see on the other hand, we have the same thing now going on at the top right. There's a lot of... Well, that was at the top right. There's a lot of action going down right now. All those Zerklings were chased down. They were actually put in the corner, apparently. And now it's the time Mutus for the actually, Mutus to come in. Yeah, there's two Queens here, so I think that should be enough. Especially with the Spore Crawler coming over. He's a little yeah. bit timid, though, on it, to be honest. I, he, he can just fight these Mutas with two Queens of Transfuse, right? Yeah, he can. Well, he should target the... Yeah, does he target okay. the full queen first? He could force a cancel on that hatch, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, he could just attack it, but the queens are there, I so he's a little bit concerned, I think. It's late already, but I think... This hatch have. is going to be cancelled. Yeah, there's no way to hold them. The Mutas well, come home, actually. Yeah. But, I mean, he's not going to hold the hatch, but he's going to at least save his drone, it looks like, and kill a lot of those Zerlings. And that's the last second cancel, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that was, like, actually pretty... really nicely done. Well, the army supply is still in favor for Pet, and he's building the better composition because he has Hydras, and uh, the Baneling speed is now on the way for Dark. Looks like he really wants to commit to Muta Baneling. I mean, the one thing that you really want to have against Hydra is his Banelings. That's always so awesome. The problem is if there are a lot of Roaches at the front that can tank that damage. Or snipe them. Yeah. Muto's actually going to go over here and try to harass, try to turn this army around. It's not going to happen, though. Pet's going to kill this hatchery one more time. Well, I don't know with those links, actually. Oh, that's a lot of Hydras, but not enough, I think. No Spore Crawlers to support either. Exactly, and now it's time for the Mutalists to chase down Queens and all those links on the ground. That's a completely different the story right now. The Spine Crawlers here still here from before. They didn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and Pet is just going for it. He says, like, well, you know what? I'm trying to make this work, but guess what? With all those Bane links and the Spine Crawlers, it's going to be a very difficult situation for this you. This base is gone. Yep, that Where did the Mutalists go? Did he lose them? No, nine of them flying no. back. They came back right yeah, now. They were all flying back, but once again, a cancel on the third base of Dark as well. And he had to cancel this one several times already. I think this is the third time. These two queens being with the army is the big problem, because he can't actually fight with his meters against this at all. Nice pick up here on another high Just catching reinforcements. I mean, really, the utility of these mules is under, under like, I, I can't even, what I'm trying to say is I haven't spoken of how much utility he's gotten out of these mules, because they've done so much for him. Yep. And he's even going to maybe get one more Roach. Not quite. Not exactly. Hydras, by the way, do not have... Okay, here it is the range upgrade. I was just about to mention that they don't have that yet, and we didn't start the research. I was afraid that he Bane forgot about speed. that. 
but too many roaches to tank. Yeah, there's also a lot of Hydralis. Even if only the Hydras start sniping the Bailings, that would be a problem. But once it, yeah, those queens are very much out of position. <laughs> yeah, they well, didn't hatch, walk back. Hatch is gonna have to be canceled. The thing is, Petzl doesn't have his own third, so yeah, both on two bases. Yeah, and he doesn't have to cancel the hatch this time. He will if the Hydras commit this time. Well, it looks like they definitely will. Just such a big army that we see here for Pet because Dark doesn't spend his resources. He's at one thousand and five hundred minerals. His problem is the lack of lava. And he, he doesn't, just doesn't have lava. He doesn't have upgrades for his range units, so for him to switch into going into uh, Hydras, for example, is just a bad choice. Um, and I, I think he's going to lose a slow and painful game here if he cannot make that switch, because yes, his Mutas have plus one, he just keeps making Mutas, but then when the Investors come out, and he already has this many Hydralis, and he makes a few Spore Crawlers because he starts to realize how much that uh, Dark is committing to this. I don't think he's going to be able to make this Mutalist composition work anymore. This is not StarCraft 1. Well, the cool thing is that he goes for double base because he says, like, I can't spend my minerals anyways. I don't have the lava right now. I might as well go into uh, two bases and uh, he's maybe I'm able to make that work. And limiting the gas for the opponent is very, very important. If he can kill a few additional bandings, that would also help him. But he has, of course, as you already pointed out, to be very careful that he doesn't run into the Infestors with a fungal. If they pin him down and the Hydras close the distance, then it's lights out for him. So, very careful unit positioning. That's what we need to he see from Dark now. But as long as he can occupy Pet, his two bases will come into play. He actually gets an Infestation Pit before he gets a Roche Warren or a Hydralist then. And he gets Burl. There's the Roche Warren. I wonder what the plan here for him is going to be. He's... Certainly not going to go swarm hosts, I wouldn't think. I think he's going to get his own investors out and then try to build up his, his unit count. But he doesn't have um, he doesn't have the upgrades. He still doesn't have any evolution chambers. And that's that's going to hurt him in the long run. I don't know what Pet's upgrades are currently at. Okay, so he has one, plus one attack only. It's four hatches now against three that will give him the lava that he needs if he uses the injects as well. And, and he actually is hosts. going swarm host. Yep. He's going swarm host. Goes for the swarm host upgrade and starts his own upgrade. If he takes the gas at those bases, he will have a huge gas lead over a pet. I thought about this for a while, but I just ruled it out of my head because he doesn't have the upgrades and he doesn't have a lot of time if if pet attacks him. If pet attacks him, if pet's able to identify this because he now has investors in his army, then the swarm host's numbers of only five before he has enough is is. Not gonna work That's out. what the mutalists are for. He just wants to occupy him for as long as he can. He knows that in a fight right now he would lose, but him buying more and more time, that's exactly what he needs. And once we have those swarm hosts, he might be able to just turtle up. And he's getting five of them as we speak. He's also getting all those upgrades that we were talking about. If he can, if, even if he loses a base, he would still be on three. That would still be alright for him. The burrow for Baneling Traps is a clever idea. May not come into fruition though, and he's gonna lose five, six overlords here. Heavily supply blocked. That means no more swarm hosts, and he needs more than five. Oh, nice! Gets an infester here too before the infester gets the fungal out. Now two more hydralists are going down. These pickoffs are amazing for him. But this time, Pet is not turning around well. As soon as I say that, he does turn around. He stops mining at this base temporarily, but it can go back. Sends the drones back in right away. Here comes a baneling roll by. <laughs> <laughs> roll by. <laughs> well, I guess you're right. He might actually just set up another uh, landmine trap. Well, this is really scary. Well, he can lose a base, that's the thing. Like, one base, he's still gonna be three base versus yeah, three I base. Yeah, just worry about his tech, you know? The Swarm host can only, can only be useful when he has a way more than he has right now. <laughs> and this is not a TBZ. The Hydras are not just gonna stim onto those brain Supply links. have looked again, and now it's time for the Mutalist to die. There was that fungal that we've been talking about earlier, and the drones, of course, at the top left, they don't do anything. They hide in plain sight underneath an overlord. Yeah. He's still trying to make these Mulas work. Like this is incredible what he's been able to do with these. The swarm host trading hit points for hit points um, on the, some of those roaches, but he's not actually spending money to do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. But oh, this roach run by. Dark's like, I have roaches by the way now. Pet's like, whoa, where did you get those? The banelings will actually get that speed boost on the creep, and we'll roll through. Goes for the the burrow. Swarm host, uh, he has six by now again. Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's going to be enough to hold uh -uh. this. The spine crawler is still though. Oh, that's yeah, that's a pretty good. Uh, that's a very, uh, very nice thing to mention because that's of course true. He has still the spine crawlers, but look at all of those infested terrans. That's also a free unit. Yeah. Uh, this looks like it's going to be too much. He needs an overseer to finish off the swarmos. He has one. 
Counterattack doing some damage, but he's not going to survive this. No, that's detection now too in the Swam Host. They Those mutas are... That's goodbye. He's starting down the Overseer. Not going to matter though. Yeah, I mean, this this is game. 100 army supply against 50. You cannot win this anymore. Especially There's a reason why this matchup is not played the way Dark just played it. <laughs> Look at all the uh, the positioning of the overlords here. If you, even if he only snipes those, there will be no chance that Pet Dog gets in the entire game another unit. That's it? Yeah, that's, that's this, this is the 1-1. One, one. We're going to see a third game between the two of them. There's no question about that. We have an attack at the third base up to the top right, where Pet is trying to defend, and he's going to make that happen. But yeah, at the bottom, everything is just going to die for Dark here. He cannot come back from this. No. No. Well, that's a Marine King GG timing if I've ever seen one. You are on one mining base that is assailed by the entire army of your opponent. GG. GG, there we go. Head with a smile and was like, yep, that worked. I really want to know who is here in the studio that could be like his family or something. I mean, for all I know. I mean, why not? Uh, he has a chance to go into Code S, so I wouldn't be surprised if his family is here. We saw already earlier that there are quite a lot of people that are cheering for him. Yeah, I mean, it's he's... probably his family, yeah. I, that's just like a guess I have because he seems like... When I see somebody like that in the booth who goes into 1-1 one, one, and he has this look on his face, I feel like he's just so happy that he knows people are here supporting him. He even just gave a look out to the crowd, as you can see. And like, I'm a huge fan just because even when I casted at the Code A Qualify, he was one of the few players that always came over and asked me, hey, do you want to join the next game? Uh, is it okay with me if we start? And that is absolutely unheard of. Usually, most of the players don't really care about that too much. He was so super nice and so friendly. He was playing against one of his teammates back then too, and uh, he's just such a nice guy. And he is a very talented player. If he gets a shot, that would be great. And for him, extra exposure would be so important. Both of them are like dark as well, but it's great that we see a third map between them. I would like to have both of them in uh, Code S, to be honest, or to advance. It's just like, in general, I feel this is one of the weaker groups that we have compared to the other names. But for these sure. are a lot of youngsters and players that can now make a name for themselves. Excluded Seed, who already won the Code S back in the days. But these are just players who kind of make a name for themselves if they get a chance here. Yeah, they were practicing hard for this group. It is a group with a lot of Zerg versus Zerg. There's always a little bit of luck involved, especially in the opening. So, I don't know. These two guys, I really like them. And Pat, he's a happy kid. He's one of the few Koreans where you really see when he wins that he is happy what happened. Think about what happened when Fantasy qualified the last time. Doesn't even smile, turns around, grabs his keyboard, leaves the studio. I'm like, dude, like, at least. Don't have to go for a fist pump here, but at least smile. Well, let's go into game number three between these two Zergs inside. Which one?